Hello, everyone. Some folks are still joining us. We're going to give them another minute or so to join, and then we'll be getting started. Stay with us. everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Erica Brooks. I'm the Director of Marketing and Archive Social, and I will be your moderator today for our webinar, Hashtag Safety Trending, Using Social Media to Increase Community Security. Joining us, we're going to have Staff Sergeant Christian Baer, Bureau Chief of Information Services from Augusta, Maine Police Department. And Christian's going to be getting started in just a second before we hand it over to him. I do want to run through a few housekeeping items. Specifically, all of you are on mute. If you have a question, there's going to be time for us to address them after the presentation. You can find a question box in your control panel. Um, if you just look for the little blue or orange arrow at the top of your screen, you can click on that and submit your questions there. And then following the webinar, keep your eyes peeled for an email from me. We'll be sharing resources, including hopefully a re recording of this webinar for you to reference. So let's dive in. Here's a look at today's agenda. Um, we're going to hear from Staff Sergeant Christian Baer first. He's going to talk specifically about how he uses social media to increase community security. He has some great information to share, including some really amazing results that he's seen using social media to help solve crimes. And then Archive Social founder and Executive Chairman Anil Chavla will be jumping in to talk about how to keep your social media safe. And then, of course, that Q&A I mentioned. So Staff Sergeant Christian Baer is the Chief Bureau of Information Services for um, Augusta, Maine Police Department, where he manages all department social media sites. Christian's received multiple awards for his 25 years in the Maine Army National Guard, including one deployment to Iraq in 2005, serving as the Regimental Safety NCOIC and Force Protection Team member for the 278th Regimental Combat Team. He joined the Augusta Police Department in 1995 and serves on the advisory board of the Capitol Clubhouse in Augusta and is a founding member of the Museum of the United States Army. I want to just quickly call out his military honors as well. So Christian was awarded the Meritorious Service Medal, an Army Commendation, an Army Achievement Medals, and the Combat Action Badge, badge along with many others. He's also been awarded the Department Merit Award for the work he does there in Augusta, Maine. With that, I'm going to go ahead and turn the controls over to Christian for him to begin his presentation. Thank you very much, Erica. I appreciate everyone attending this webinar today, and uh, I really am glad uh, we here at Augusta PD in the city of Augusta, Maine are very happy to have been included in uh, the webinar today uh, that was put on by, that's being put on here by uh, the archive social folks, and that, um, we have been given the opportunity today to kind of talk about how we've been successful and how we are successful here in uh, the city of Augusta and engaging with our community here uh, in this in this great city. So uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak today and to present some information. And um, at the moment, Erica, I'm actually not seeing the slides. They kind of went away for a second. So I don't know if you can get those back up or not. Chris, did you have them on your screen to share so you can drive through? Um, hang on one sec. What what I was just seeing was not there. So you're on my screen now? I see your screen. If you go into present, we'll okay. be perfect. Perfect. Yeah, I'll do that.
Okay, guys. Um, so in discussing our social media engagement here in the city of Augusta, um, we we have had sort of a top to bottom um, discussion with all the police officers and the civilian staff who work here at Augusta PD. And this engagement that we're so lucky to have with uh, our community really kind of starts with the program of training that we do with our officers here at Augusta PD. And that training consists of a lot of uh, buy-in from our officers when they're first hired uh, to where we put a lot of officers to work immediately on uh, social, uh, locally, uh, local projects where an officer will immediately in their training, their first week of training, they're given kind of a project where they're immediately engaged in the community, where they might be uh, talking to stakeholders in downtown businesses or uh, government officials within the city to help try to solve uh, issues that we're dealing with. And so in doing that immediate training with officers that, that get hired here, they, ha they, uh, they get to see that we have this engagement with our community right from day one of their hired hiring process. So in that, in that realm, uh, bringing in newer officers, essentially we're getting a lot of Generation Z people today who have only ever known uh, social media in their lives, growing up with a smartphone in their hands. So it kind of makes sense that we've, we've swung to a point now where social media, uh, we see it as a very important way to get uh, engagement with our community across many different uh, platforms, which are, they're all free, as you know, to anyone who's interested in using those platforms. I think that we do a great job here of engaging across many platforms in, in, in many different ways. And so if in building engagement, we've, we started out with um, just kind of building a, a website way back in, you know, the mid 2000s, uh, like a, like a website that was open to people. And I think during those years, it became evident that the social media platform of Facebook was, was something that perhaps we should look into. And more and more law enforcement agencies in those years did the same. And so we started with Facebook, which has really gotten us a lot of engagement, a lot of, uh, a lot of ways to kind of reach out to the public with all the good things that we're doing. Uh, we see our Facebook page here at Augusta, Maine as sort of the daily news. And so with that being said, we'll put uh, items on in the morning that we share around, but we'll, we'll then move over to our Twitter and Instagram, which our Twitter is more of a uh, daily news ticker. And I think everyone sees it that way. So if we have an immediate event that we want, certainly the, the local uh, area media, the TV and newsprint to, to kind of get, get the information on quickly, we'll put it out on Twitter and get that information out. And then we'll engage back and forth, sometimes through the chat on that, and sometimes through uh, the Twitter page itself where they're asking more questions, trying to get more information or calling us directly because they, they are, we already share our numbers uh, among that group as well. Uh, with Instagram, uh, Snapchat is something new that we just started this year, but with Instagram, obviously embedded with Facebook, uh, we can put stuff on Instagram that will go right to Twitter and Facebook. So that's kind of a way that some of our other social media uh, managers can engage quickly from Instagram uh, a good story or information that we want to put out and put it right onto those two platforms through their handheld devices. Um, and let's, let's go back and I mentioned Snapchat for just a second, but this year we decided, you know what, let's try Snapchat and see how we can engage there. And we have many followers on Snapchat too, surprisingly so, but I think we knew that moving into, uh, uh, possibly 2010 very quickly here that probably getting on Snapchat is something that we could engage as well. And we've gotten a lot of feed, good positive feedback through that. Uh, I want to talk quickly now too about um, our YouTube channel, which really doesn't have too many followers currently, except for people right here in the local area. We have approximately 157 followers on that page, but we have a lot of engagement through YouTube. Uh, we had one video of an animal issue with two eagles that were locked together in mortal combat where their talons were kind of stuck together and uh, our animal control officer and a local main game warden uh, were able to separate them uh, safely as would be done but that was caught on video and we put that on our YouTube channel and we had over 128,000 views of that one video so YouTube has really been kind of a great uh, a great uh, asset for us to use and to engage not just with our local community but really worldwide. 
And I want to mention quickly the LinkedIn. Uh, Augusta PD doesn't have a separate LinkedIn channel right now. However, I have a uh, Christian Bayer, uh, Bureau Chief of Information Services of Augusta PD uh, page on that, that, that practically everything we share in all of our other social media realms lands there as well. So that gets a lot of engagement and a lot of, uh, a lot of good information sharing uh, through all these platforms. And really, I think that with that being said, just that one slide alone shows you that we have really reached out, I think, to the, to the greatest possible extent of one department, which is a, an apartment of our size is 65 total with, with about 45 sworn and 20 non-sworn. I think that we're doing really well when it comes to that kind of uh, that kind of engagement. So if you want to hear about what we're doing, besides what I kind of just stated, we, we do regular media and social media presence. It's very, very strong in the city of Augusta. We have a lot of personal relationships with our local newspaper and uh, local uh, television outlet news, uh, news people who will engage with almost on a weekly basis, if not a daily basis, in a lot of, in a lot of ways. Um, we do have several people in the department that are administrators of our social media that have the ability to post and moderate comments, as well as engage with people uh, back and forth when it's appropriate. Uh, I myself would do pretty much all of the social media department overseeing kind of everything that we have, where we're going, where we should go, what we need. But as, a, as an administrative group, we discuss these things on a weekly basis. And then uh, we will do different goal settings throughout the year, just to ensure that our social media is reaching the kind of audience that we want, and and making sure that we use several different platforms, as I stated, to get that to get that message out. Um, again, we we do maintain a very strong relationship with our our local media outlets. So it's kind of to the point now where when they call in the morning and say, "Hey, is there anything going on?" You know, 10 or 15 years ago, the standard answer might have been, "No, nothing, nothing really happening." To the point where now that that phone call gets routed to one of several of us who will engage quickly with uh, the interesting stories and things that that they might be willing to share. And as you can see here on this particular one that uh, our friends at Archive Social pulled out of our social media uh, from Facebook, uh, we've run nine chat with the chief episodes so far. We've been doing that on uh, our YouTube channel. And actually, yesterday we posted our 14th story. So for the past 14 weeks we have posted a standalone YouTube uh, event where our chief, Jared Mills, who's very, very good about social media, loves the aspect of uh, reaching out to all of our, our public through these, uh, through these different channels. Uh, he has sat down with roughly 14 different people, different entities over 14 weeks and talked about a different event each week. And yesterday we were at the Maine Criminal Justice Academy talking to our cadet who's going through the uh, 18 week program there and kind of did a chat with him after a, an inspection that they do with all the police chiefs from around the state. And that went over very well in speaking to that officer, uh, taking him aside and then posting that chat with a chief onto YouTube and all of our social media platforms. We've already had quite a bit of engagement because of that. And we want to show you in a situation uh, where we can also get a lot of, a lot of good positive feedback with people in the community is through um, these types of posts here where we'll see if I can get that to play. Um, this is one of our YouTube posts that wasn't exactly, didn't exactly go the way we wanted it to. Now I'm trying to pull that up, Erica. And I'm, yeah, I'm not sure if I can get that to play. I'm looking for the, the link, but I don't see it there. So this, this uh, video, if you check out on YouTube, when you get a chance, the Augusta Police Department's YouTube channel, uh, you'll see that we were doing a safety video on the slippery conditions that day. And what ended up happening was it was caught on the video that I slipped and fell, which in and of itself was not that big of a deal, but in posting that story alone, it really kind of showed um, we can make fun of ourselves and have a fun time doing it. Everybody really engaged positively with videos like that. So we want to encourage everybody. That's one good way to reach out to your public 
or the the demographic that you're trying to uh, to get to, uh, with a lot of a lot not not overall, but a lot of uh, humor, really really goes a long way with your with your folks, and I think that's important that we we touch on that. That humor is very important to make sure that you do reach out in that way as well. And that's the YouTube channel icon. So uh, one important thing to consider when you're building your pages, and I'm sure everybody's got pages, um, is we try to brand everything the same here at Augusta. Uh, kind of gives you some continuity and shows the, your audience that uh, you're kind of all in with the different things that you do on social media. And so these pages here, uh, the Facebook page, Instagram, uh, YouTube, and our, um, our Twitter page all kind of have the same banner uh, with the patches and the badge with the background. The, uh, the wood background behind the badge. And I think that's a very important thing to note because it gives the public kind of the idea that somebody is maintaining these pages, there's a lot of continuity to them, and that it's important that, um, you know, they're maintained and have, have roughly uh, information, the same kind of information across all the platforms. Because we know that not everyone's on Facebook, not everyone's on Instagram or Twitter or even YouTube. Um, if the channels all kind of look the same, similar from the same organization, it gives you that, uh, that kind of credibility among the audiences. So I think it's important that you look and see that all your pages are essentially branded the same. Now, we will also update our snap picture sometimes with uh, an event or uh, something that's going on during that time of the year, such as Christmas or Halloween. We haven't done a Halloween theme yet, but that may be coming up very shortly. And so... Keeping your pages branded all the same is, I think, a very important aspect of this. So um, what is our engagement process? I think that most, most departments, and certainly this one is a big one in, in getting and obtaining uh, department buy-in, which, again, I said that goes from top to bottom. Uh, we talk about uh, the chief and the vision and goal setting, and on a yearly basis, that's discussed among the city of Augusta along with the uh, police department. And so part of it is the department buy-in, which we have, I think we have a department that's all in. And we'll talk about some slides at the end where we recently ran a survey and found out that almost uh, with a, you know, to a person, we've used uh, our social media to assist us in keeping the community safe by helping, having uh, their help in solving crime. Uh, our administration sets our policy and uh, that includes personal web pages and sites as well as what we use for uh, our social media as a police department. I'm gonna go back real quick. Um, and as I say, the municipality here in goal settings, 100% on board with what we're doing here on social media. In fact, we had a recent event uh, in our downtown area where uh, a one-way section of, of street in Augusta, which had been one way for, I think it was close to 70 years, uh, was recently changed to a two-way and in, Towns like Augusta, that was a big change for us, and a lot of people uh, were just were uh, a lot of buy-in was there, and people were had discussions over that. So we actually, as the police department, and myself as the social media manager, were brought in along with the chief of police to kind of help with that. And there's certainly been a lot of discussions. And when we ended up uh, doing a couple of videos that were made by here by us here at the police department, we had a lot of good engagement with our local media through our social media postings with those videos that we produced and talked about the upcoming changes to the to the road downtown and uh, got a lot of positive feedback through those in in engaging ahead of time through our social media uh, YouTube site and all of our other social media platforms. Uh, we had a lot of good feedback, positive feedback um, with the community at large, and especially notifying people to a new traffic pattern change. That's always precarious to make sure that kind of the word gets out so people aren't confused the first day that those things change. We had a lot of success with that. Um, on a yearly basis, we do try to assess the strategies of our social media to ensure that uh, we're kind of meeting the goals that we wanted to, which is really engagement over different platforms and a lot of good uh, two-way conversations with folks, and, and we do that on a yearly basis. And we do we try to do things differently, like in this year, starting a new, uh, being part of a new social media platform, which for us was is Snapchat. Um, the videos, the chat with the chief videos, again, as I said earlier, we've, we're doing our, we did our 14th one yesterday, that's 14 weeks of producing a, a quick video, quick, like five, four to five minute video 
where our chief of police will chat with somebody within the department, sometimes outside the department, to discuss an issue that is of um, concern to people in the community. And just recently, we had somebody engaged with us on social media who thought that uh, they had a good idea for a chat with the chief, which we'll probably will do very soon, is engaging younger drivers with the new laws uh, that they'll be that they'll be uh, using as new drivers, talking about laws that affect younger drivers. So that's a place where we're actually meeting a great goal there of engaging with our community and, and doing something that's been suggested. Uh, with this video, uh, again, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to play it. I tried playing the other one, but I couldn't find where the, the player would be for that. But if you look, um, Facebook Live is a great way to engage with your community. Um, doing a Facebook Live for the first time here, this video is on our Facebook page. Ultimately was a press conference that we ran live after a major event that we had here in Augusta. And we had several of our media partners here at the police department for this press conference, which um, I was in, and we talked about a uh, crime that had occurred here in Augusta. It was our very first time, I think this was 2016, uh, our very first time that we did a Facebook Live as a press conference. We had a lot of positive feedback about that. We were able to put our message out uh, ahead of anybody else, as well as we did have the press there, but um, we were doing it in live time. And so we had a lot of positive engagement with that. I think that trying Facebook Live or doing Facebook Live is very important. Uh, we also understand that through the Twitter app, there is a Periscope uh, application for live video, which we've used several times as well and very successfully. So I think that doing the live video with our community uh, gets a lot of positive engagement. It gets people uh, the knowledge that we're out there doing stuff that they might be interested in. Christian, I can try to play that if you're not seeing the drop down list under the sharing, if you'd like me to. Yeah, yeah, would you please? Awesome, let me pop in real fast and take controls and I will do that right now. Thank you. Uh, good evening. I'm Sergeant Mayor uh, from the Augusta Police Department, and at this time I'm um, going to discuss the incident synopsis of the Walmart incident that occurred tonight. Uh, on 6:26:16, at approximately 5:24 p.m., multiple 911 calls were received about shots being fired in the parking lot of Walmart in Augusta. And based upon the multiple reports of shots fired, there were several witnesses that were able to provide the emergency dispatchers with vehicle and people descriptions that were involved. With the assistance of the State Police, Sheriff's Office, Hollowell PD, Winthrop PD, and the Capitol Police, four people who were involved have been detained. It was learned that all the suspects involved were sitting in the vehicles parked next to each other. The occupants of one vehicle started shooting at the occupants of another. The vehicle parked right directly next to them. This resulted in return gunfire. When the shooting stopped, one suspect exited their vehicle to confront the occupants of the other vehicle. At this time, the incident who had watched the incident unfold. No one was injured no during the incident, and medical the assistance, medical assistance, which was on scene, was denied. Okay, thank you for playing that. So, um, to the audience, one of the great lessons kind of learned from doing this for the very first time was that um, we re we learned really quickly we needed to have a phone that was charged because you can see we kind of lost some uh, pixelate there was some pixelation there at the end we should probably have a tripod set up as well that uh, kept that kind of audio uh, kept that uh, video sta uh, static for us and um, also that the message that we got out was us telling it and it, so it didn't come from another source it was us being able to control our message and I really think that that's that's most important when it comes to utilizing these kinds of uh, social media platforms. You can get ahead of your story very quickly 
and and um, adeptly if you're the one that's that's managing that. So in working together as a team here, uh, as a social media manager with the administrators, we're able to do that kind of that kind of community uh, research uh, uh, outreach. Um, I think I'm gonna. I think I've got that that drop down now. So I'm gonna play you really quickly the uh, the video, the slippery conditions video. So you can see we posted this on YouTube and had a lot of good positive feedback uh, from the community. And not only the community, but uh, my entire family thinks this is one of the best videos that they've ever seen. Hi, I'm Sergeant Bear from Augusta PD. We just want to show you the roads today. Uh, we're getting that slush that comes down sometimes. That's really, really fun. Uh, boom! We'll yeah, so we did use that actually, as, uh, as stated. And uh, what was great about that video was it kind of showed the Showed everyone around us that uh, you know we're just we're just like everyone else. We're we're human, and those kinds of things happen. So I think that's a great engagement. Um, the next one that I wanted to share with everybody was the um, WABI five in Bangor, which is just north of Augusta. Uh, they have a local uh, news outlet that's that's in Waterville, just outside of our area, and they'll come down very very. Um, frequently to talk to us about different things involving law enforcement, police work, and uh, they did a great story about our uh, department outreach through uh, different kinds of social media. And if we can, we can run that one really quickly. I think it uh, tells, tells a really, really good story in a very short period of time on how we engage with our public. When it comes to when social comes media, to social the media, Augusta Police, the Police Augusta Department Police is all in. Is Paul Dwyer has, has the story. Hello, everybody. Welcome Hello, everybody. again to Welcome another edition of Chat with the Chief. Chief. I'm, I'm your Chief, Chief. Jared Mills, Chief. and today I'm here with today Officer Wiggin. Episode 9 Episode of Chat with the Chief. Chief. It was his idea. Uh, we kind of, the first one, it was interesting. We, we, we used a uh, camera from our uh, CID, our, our detective division. It was an older camera. Very grainy. They've since improved their recording methods and weekly episodes. Episodes of Chat with the Chief have become a real hit. A lot goes into the videos from planning. We don't want to confuse people. We'll just, this is what the new law is going to be. To recording. Some of the hands-on stuff of how it looks like. To editing. This is just like stuff that most people have already on their computer. Knowing the Chief's vision and knowing the department's mission statement to to, to really be community-oriented. So what's one more way is to just utilize this free social media platform to the highest extent, which is put out our message. They have a Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and even Snapchat. Not to mention they have their own APD app. We've been here 21 years, um, and we've never been to this point um, in the time I've been here as far as uh, our, our relationship with the community, our, you know, the, our outreach, and the messages we're getting out. Being able to reach as many people as possible by utilizing a wide variety of social media platforms means a lot to the department. Department. We'll continue to try to stay at the forefront of that stuff. I think that you'll always see Augusta Police Department trying to be, like the chief said earlier, as proactive as possible, and this is one of the best ways to do that. Paul Dwyer, WABI, TV5 News. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Augusta. Okay, so that story right there, I think, really kind of tells it all. It kind of tells you um, a lot of the information on what we do and how we do it. Um, and it's, it's very important, I think, to engage uh, the community, not only through social media, but through using um, the media, the, the actual, the television media, the news media, print media, as much as possible to get your message out. And that kind of helps show the community, it gives a lot more credibility, I think, to just a, a run on the middle social media site when you have the uh, engagement of the actual media in your area as well. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention was the fact that uh, just today, a news story came out from the uh, Bangor, Bangor uh, News that uh, the Bangor Daily News reported today that total crime in Maine has dropped by 40% since 2019. And uh, that's like the, sa- the seventh straight year of declining rates. And the, the Commissioner of Public Safety, Michael Shawshuck, had stated um, that he believes, and so do we here at Augusta PD, that the strong partnerships we have in our communities are something that have led to that. And so in, in hearing him say that and knowing how we engage in our community um, as frequently as we do uh, through all of our different uh, media and social media platforms, 
I think that that kind of tells the story right there. It tells the story that um, we are all in when it comes to the media and certainly our social media. Uh, that that Those are great comments right there, the fact that uh, our community stays engaged with us. Now, I want to move over quickly to the City of Augusta Police Department's actual web page that shows you, um, this is kind of the 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 how we come full circle. So if the majority of people today just go to social media like Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and things like that, uh, our web page, which might have been the, the number one spot to start at earlier, is a place where you can come back to now if you're interested in, in kind of seeing what we offer. But right on our homepage from the Augusta Police Department, we talk about uh, social media and all those links right there to include the tip phone on one app, which I'll talk more about in a minute, will take you right to those social media pages. And I'm sure that that's not new news to anybody, but I think that that's something that's very relevant because a lot of folks may just go to uh, the website looking for information such as contacting us or annual APD da data, et cetera. There's a lot of information there, but it also takes direct links right to your social media sites. That also builds credibility when your social media uh, is connected right back to that official government website that you that you maintain as well and there are several of us here who continue to update and maintain those websites uh, so i guess erica if you could run the poll right now i think that'd be great Okay, so I'm not sure. Uh, we do have a poll. We we're kind of wondering to see from all of our participants today. I see there's 61 attendees, um, and, and maybe they're still going to run that poll. But uh, the poll was or will be, how are you archiving your social media? Uh, because it live. You might not be able to see it, but it is out there going on. And we've got 60% oh, okay. of respondents. We'll leave it open for another couple seconds, and then we'll go ahead and close Oh, perfect. Out. I'm glad you said that. Thanks so much. Um, so I'll continue to I'll continue to go on then. Um, our social media policy we have we have two policies one that covers uh, sort of the department social media pages and how we manage those, as well as um, a separate policy on personal web pages and sites to ensure that we treat everyone fairly to make sure that uh, everyone's First Amendment right to the freedom of speech is recognized. Um, as well as the fact that uh, people who are employed here and, and work for the municipality are employed by government agencies, so they have to maintain a certain standard of um, uh, decorum on their social media pages. And those have all been um, uh, established for quite some time. So as I stated earlier, the department will set the policy on social media. Uh, we've had a lot of success with that, um, and those are well known throughout our organization. We archive all of our social media as our backup. And as I stated earlier to uh, uh, Erica when we were setting this up, that it was it was done prior to that. It was done by it was done manually, actually. And it was very, very um, <laughs> kind of kind of hard to handle because you were screenshotting uh, information that we might put up one day, but then quickly would want to remove for privacy reasons. If let's say it was the picture of a suspect that we identified uh, whether they were the actual suspect or somebody um, other than who we believe to have committed a crime, we would remove those and then just keep them separately uh, screenshotted, essentially, for future reference if it was ever needed for a discovery issue. Uh, with uh, the advent of us using uh, Archive Social and the searchability that that allows us, that's no longer necessary. And it was interesting because we recently put up a, yet another uh, shoplifter from a store and... Uh, when I get the request from the officer, um, and we we don't get those directly, we have a we have a um, email uh, group set up within the department on Outlook for our Facebook uh, social media postings. That goes to a group of us who can uh, manage that at any time, day or night. Uh, when that came through, the officer had mentioned that they still put it into the file folder that we were using 
uh, for screenshotting. And the chief had to say, he kind of went back to him and said, ah, we're actually not using that anymore. We've, we've been archiving our social media for a long time, but officers were still ready to do that as part of the team effort to make sure that we didn't lose something, especially if we needed it in the future. So I think that's important that we note, we note that as well. Sure, and I can share the results of those poll, that poll if you're ready, Christian. Yeah, that would be great. So 44% of people on this call that responded to the poll do not actively archive. 18% are in the similar boat you were in before and are taking screenshots. 5% are printing out their social media post for record keeping. And 33% are archive social customers and actively archiving. Oh, that's awesome. So it, what's, what's, I guess what's, um, what might be concerning is the 44% that don't archive but take a chance. And we were never served with a lawsuit looking for uh, information that we weren't giving out or had deleted something that we might not should have or we might have sh we should have not deleted. Um, but we did we we talked about it and just did not want to take that chance. And uh, by using a social media archiving uh, software ability, I think that that's very important. And if you're not, you should look into ways that you might be able to either budget for that or afford for that because I think it's a very, very smart thing to do, which is why we started doing that a number of years ago. So that's interesting that that poll shows that, and I'm glad to see that people are engaging through this uh, webinar to try to get some information, maybe gain uh, ways that that, should be, that could be important for them. Um, as we look at this, this slide here, we do keep our community in our corner. I think that in talking about speech being protected, we, uh, we have a strong, robust policy, as I stated earlier. All of our social media sites will uh, disclaim that, uh, you know, the, the things that people post are their opinions only and not that of the city of Augusta or the, the police department. And we do uh, reserve our right to uh, remove things that are off color, off topic, uh, obscene, or that are in some way, shape or form hateful or not, um, not should not be part of that public discussion. Um, and we've had a lot of luck with that. We've had a lot of good feedback as far as uh, the kind of engagement that we have. Um, we do talk, I think that we talk to everyone all the time because social media is 24 seven, it never stops. Uh, people will comment when they're up, uh, whether it's the middle of the night or during the middle of the day. And we find that we get great community buy-in for liking, sharing, and tagging things all across the community, and in some cases uh, around the world. We've we've traded patches with uh, police departments around the world who will tag us when they get back to Germany or something like that, holding up our police patch, and we've done the same. That was a really cool thing that we did a few times with people who were doing patch trading. Um, our social media managers are trained in what uh, what to take down and what to ignore. In fact, we use the we have used the comment moderation guide from so, from Archive Social Media, uh, Archive Social, which is a great way to just kind of reinforce the things that we know uh, should not be uh, included or the type of people and things that can be posted that aren't appropriate for uh, some social media sites. So I think that's important. And we're glad to get the kind of feedback that we see here from Linda Picard Dub Dunbar. And from Chris Greeley, who is a, uh, a media personality in our area as well. And that kind of feedback right there really shows uh, we have a lot of community buy-in. I'll move along quickly to our crime mapping with Raids Online and TIP 411. Uh, in the last year, Augusta PD had partnered with TIP 411, which is a crime application that you can get for your smartphone uh, to be able to send us crime tips. It enables uh, the police department to receive anonymous tips from the public and have an actual two-way conversation with those folks if they choose to do so, that remains anonymous and doesn't give us any kind of way of knowing who is telling us that tip information unless they choose to tell us. Um, through the LexisNexis Community Crime Map, we actually have the ability to share with our public anytime, day or night, uh, the, the types of crimes that are being reported in the neighborhoods in the city of Augusta, and that uh, interacts seamlessly with the TIP 411 app to be able to allow people who might not, not who might not have the app on their phone, but use the crime map on a computer to submit us an anonymous tip or give us some kind of information. And we've had a lot of good success with that as well. Uh, this shows uh, the website for the Augusta PD has a separate page that talks all about the tip 411 app and when we launched it and uh, how it works with people uh, that want to utilize that, as well as a quick, uh, it's another, um, YouTube video that shows you kind of how TIP 411 app works with the city of Augusta, and it's been very successful in helping us. So uh, I'm going to wrap up now with uh, a couple of polls that we ran recently, 
And it's from the city of Augusta police department officers here that have engaged uh, with social media to help solve crime. And it's very relevant that of the responses that we had, and again, I said earlier, we're about 45 sworn officers here. The majority of the officers that have used social media to try to solve uh, a crime they're investigating, almost to a person have had success in solving that crime through the use of social media. That's so important, especially in today's day and age, where we can get that instant feedback from people. The second one was ways the public have reached out to us. And so in trying to get the answers back on things that we post, we found that most times somebody will send a uh, private message chat through the Facebook app to us with the information that leads to solving a crime. That is very important because people are engaging us in those ways. So I think that looking at that from the city of Augusta size of 19,000, uh, we have a lot of people who are willing to tell us the things that help us lead to solving different crimes. And finally, um, which works best? It looks like overall it's posting right to Facebook that has helped us with the majority of solving these crimes. Um, through, the, through the messenger, uh, we'll get answers to that. And we also have a lot of success uh, or some success with uh, the Instagram app in helping us solve crimes as well. So I guess in wrapping it up, um, I wanted to let everyone know that one of the first things we did to engage in social media in about 2011 or 2012 or so was a history project that we started to get some of the information from people in our community on the history of Augusta PD, which we really didn't have a great, uh, a great handle on all the things that had happened in the city of Augusta since 1850 when the police department was first established. In doing that kind of uh, Facebook reach out to the people in our community as a Facebook event, we got a lot of feedback and we had an event here at the police department as a result of that where people came in, they brought us stories and newspaper articles, old badges and old, uh, old uniforms that we heretofore didn't have any of because they were lost to history and family members brought those in. That was one of our first, first engagements that really got people to come into the police department as a result. Uh, I think that it's important to note as well that here at, or at any uh, agency that's, that's willing to be out on a limb, essentially, in some ways for their social media, that you have people that want to be engaged and are willing to do the work. That's very, very important. Um, and I guess I, with that being said at this time, I think I'll turn it back over to Erica, and I appreciate everyone that was involved in the webinar today. Yeah, thank you so much for that great presentation, Chris. You know, that that number about having 29 posts with 28 soft crimes using social media is really awesome. And I shared it here with some of my coworkers, and there was an audible gasp in the room at just the great impact that social media can have and helping to make, um, you know, communities safer. And, of course, we're also here to talk about how we can use, um, you know, archiving services to help make your social media safe. And with that, I'm going to briefly introduce Anil. So Anil's our founder. And Executive Chairman of Archive Social. He is a national speaker and subject matter expert on legal policy and record management issues related to social media and government. He's been on stage at several places. Most recently, he was actually on stage in Reno at the Social for Safety Conference, where we were speaking about how to keep social media safe. Um, so with that, I would like to turn it over to Anil, who will run us through the next part of our presentation. Well, thank you, Erica. Thank you, Staff Sergeant Bear. And thank you all for joining us. Uh, as Erica said, this has been uh, a, a kind of a buildup of how social media can keep you safe, uh, can keep your citizens safe, I should say, keep your community safe. But we also want to talk about how to keep your agency safe in the use of social media. And, and you know, we maybe not be able to catch you from a, a slip on the ice, but there's a lot that we can do with some policy work, with some technology to keep you safe. And really appreciated you, Staff Sergeant Bear, kind of laying out the framework of, of how you've approached social media. I, I thought the commentary and examples in the video showing that it's not always perfect and pretty, uh, it's kind of raw and authentic, actually speaks to the, to the quality, the value, uh, and the impact of social media, really humanizing the agency, getting the message out quick, controlling that message. But again, as you do that as an agency, you are one side of the, of the conversation. And there is a second side of the conversation that's equally as important back from your citizens, back from the community. And so there's a lot of critical, important information flowing across social media at all times, and it's important for you as an agency to think about the legal implications, the policy implications, and of course, the records. So I'm going to take a step back here um, to really talk about protecting you as an agency, ensuring your safety. We'll, we'll definitely touch on archiving um, at a higher educational level. I, you know, full disclosure, we're an archiving company. But what I want to do here 
is really arm our audience with some data points behind why record keeping matters and how it can actually protect agencies when the record requests and the legal situations come up. And they certainly are coming up at an increasing frequency these days. Now, before we get into some of the case studies, baseline uh, understanding here for all of us is that social media is public record in government. Uh, this has been tested and proven time and time again, and uh, it has led to some challenges for, for agencies who were unprepared. Uh, on the flip side, agencies that never had records requests or legal situations were proactive, just like the Augusta Police Department. And when a situation came up, they were really able to weather the situation and protect themselves. And so a lot of, lot of guidance has developed across the nation. I wanted to point you to, to this one resource that we've developed. Again, our goal with this presentation and a lot of work we do here at Archive Social is first and foremost to be a resource to all of you. And what we've done is we've consolidated the latest and greatest guidance from across the United States relating to social media and your public records implications. And so if you go to this map, uh, whether you're in Maine or you're in Augusta, Georgia, where I grew up, you can go check out the latest guidance from your state, see the records law, but also see the guidance that talks about the social networking platforms, what you can expect the platform to do for you, what you can expect it not to do for you, hint, they're not going to keep records for you, and how you as an agency can, can navigate that. So check out those resources. Again, some agencies uh, often come to us with questions and, and detailed questions about public records. I'll, get, I'll give a, an opportunity later for us to, um, to talk about how we can give you some additional guidance around this. But let's start with the map. And I want to take you then into the challenge. The challenge with social media um, is, is actually pretty unique. Like email, like your other documents, it constitutes public record. But unlike that other information, it's really out of your control. It sits out on Facebook and Twitter. And while you contribute to the conversation, you don't control all of it. It, it, it changes in real time, and your citizens can comment, uh, edit, delete at any time. Part of the beauty of social media, open conversation, part of the challenge is that it's an open conversation that you can't control. And again, it sits out there with Facebook and Twitter, uh, which are networks that, um, frankly, are, are really tuned towards protecting privacy and making sure they're not sharing data. Um, and your obligation as a government agency is somehow to get that data in your hands um, to fulfill your public records requirements. And so if you, if you aren't um, addressing this in some way, uh, you are losing records. You're losing important, critical government records that by law you're required to have. So let's talk about a situation when this happened. This actually happened ha in South Carolina. And one of the common themes that we see in the industry uh, and, and really a normal occurrence is for content to appear on your social media that doesn't quite fit your, your norms and standards for, for how you hope that the public will comment. Uh, oftentimes there's content that violates your policy. Um, there are uh, appropriate and correct ways in which you can hide, remove, uh, delete that content. But concerns do come up when a staff member or a public official removes content and a citizen feels like their First Amendment rights are being violated. And this again happened in South Carolina. The agency, the, agency uh, the DOT there, removed the comments, blocked the citizen from the page. The citizen then filed a lawsuit, again, alleging First Amendment um, infringement. Um, and here's the problem. Now you're in a legal situation. You've already gotten rid of the content. You've deleted it. But now you have to tell your side of the story. And if you're not keeping records, how do you do that? This is the situation that we see time and time again. Again, the agencies that are proactive with archiving and record keeping and fulfilling their public records obligations simply produce the record and move on. Um, we've, again, seen that time and time again. Uh, but when you can't produce the records, it becomes news uh, and becomes a legal burden for your agency. Now, I want to tell one more story. It's not on the slide. The same, you know, South Carolina DOT had a situation where they were uh, tweeting about um, an upcoming weather event. The, the content on Twitter was no longer available later on. They had a public records request to, to produce it. Again, not having a archive themselves, didn't have the tweet. Fortunately, the State Highway Patrol works with, with us here at Archive Social had retweeted them. And so when the agency reached out for help, the State Highway Patrol said, well, we actually have an archive. We retweeted you. Here's the record and, and really bailed them out. So a great example of how you know, getting ahead of the problem can really, really pay dividends um, when the situation occurs. Now, let's talk about content being deleted. Uh, I know a lot of you are listening to this and saying, well, OK, I got it. You know, Don't delete. Um, that's not what I'm saying. Uh, there are appropriate times and, and actually uh, times where it's not just appropriate, but maybe the really the right thing to do is to proactively remove content to keep that presence clean. But bigger than that, uh, there, there is this issue of data disappearing from the social network. And so we at Archive Social have studied this in depth, that we not only archive, but our, our technology can detect deletions. And so we did a study looking at 500 public sector customers 
um, during the course of 2018, uh, included uh, public agencies of all sizes and all types, including school districts. In 2018, amazing, amazing stat here on the use of social media and government. These 500 public agencies generated over 10 million social media posts, including their own posts, including the comments and replies from citizens. Five months later in 2019, we took a look at how much of that content of the 10 million posts, how much actually is no longer on the social network. Over 750,000 comments and posts had disappeared, had been deleted, no longer available on the social network. So you got big numbers here, 10 million, 758,000. Let's simplify this. If you do the numbers, do the math, it really breaks down to about 1,500 per customer, over 120 per month. Okay, still some different numbers. Let's make it really simple here. When you do the math, one out of 15 records no longer available on the social network. If you pull up Facebook right now on your agency page, you will see about 15 posts and comments. Imagine six to 12 months from now, one of those is gone. Scroll down, do it again, rinse and repeat. That is an alarming rate of data loss and it's the reality of what's happening. Now, if you're wondering, well, how in the world did all this content disappear? And why are, are, why are these agencies hitting delete so much? The reason that this content disappears, again, goes back to the fact that the social network is designed in a two-way fashion and you don't control all of it. So here's a few ways that content gets deleted. And let's actually, let's not focus on the agency. Let's imagine you never hit delete ever. But let's look at the other side of the equation, the citizen. The citizen can delete their own comment, say the top level comment you see. And that would, uh, uh, or, or one of the comments in here, that comment goes away. The citizen could actually delete the top level comment. That will actually get rid of all the replies, including replies from other citizens, including replies from your own agency. So that's how content from your agency can disappear. And then the craziest way, which happens actually quite frequently, but we often don't think about, is that somebody, uh, a citizen may decide that they no longer want to partake on the social network. If you've ever had a friend quit Facebook, it's pretty easy to do. And again, to protect your privacy, the social network will pull out all of your content, all of your comments, all of your posts, again, including all the replies to it, and wipe it out. So this content gets removed and deleted and lost all the time at an alarming rate, and you may not even know it's happening. Um, now we see it looking at these studies that that is happening at, at, a quite alarm, at quite a consistent pace across all of, the, all of the agencies that we look at. So when it comes to your public records requirements, um, the important content that you have on social media, such as we, as we heard from, from the Augusta Police Department, I'm sure many of you have similar situations in which social media has been impactful in, in a given circumstance. When you think about all that and then realize that, that content can instantly disappear without you even knowing, it becomes abundantly clear that you need to do something about it. Now, my goal here is to kind of lay out the different options you have, and we had the poll earlier. Uh, about two thirds of you um, are not uh, using any kind of archiving technology. Um, some of you may be taking screenshots. So let's just break this down. Um, if you're relying on the data to be on the social network, big takeaway here is that you can't. Um, it's only there until it's there. Um, that is, that's not sufficient for meeting your records requirements. There's also a lot of challenges. Even if the content's there, searching it is very limited. Uh, and really being able to respond to a records request, um, a non-trivial records request, can be extremely difficult. Same thing with screenshots. So you may be expending some effort. I, I saw in the poll that uh, you know a, a good portion of, of the audience here taking screenshots. Um, imagine now you have a records request. How do you search and find what, what you need? You can't really search the screenshots. It's very limited. So it does take you to archiving software. Again, there are different options out there. And we've got a matrix here of things to look for in archiving software. I won't dive into it uh, given the time we have, but really, really important to think about automating this unique technology. And then there are ways to evaluate that technology because again, the social networks aren't really built for archiving and compliance. Um, so there are some vast differences in the, in the technology approaches out there. So when it comes to uh, protecting your agency, it is important to, to always balance. There's the factor of cost, um, but there's also the risk, right? And, and there's that legal obligation to public records law. And again, relying on the networks does put you in a very high uh, state of, of, of potential non-compliance. Um, Taking screenshots may, may, may seem free in terms of budgetary dollars, but it does take up a lot of time and again, doesn't quite reduce your risk. So you have to really think about the right time and hopefully the time is now for you to, to find, find something to protect you as you use social media day in and day out, given how important that content is. I did wanna lay this out though, because a lot of folks think about technology to archive. You may be familiar with email archiving and other, other infrastructure projects that are in the tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars. Given the nature of social media, it's all cloud-based. All of the technology in this space um, requires no in installation or deployment. 
it's actually shockingly low cost, typically under 5K annual, um, depending, uh, no matter which option you look at, often a discretionary spend. It's actually a really easy budgetary spend for the risk that you have, the importance of social media, and being able to solve that problem effectively instantly. I want to give you just a couple of success stories um, before we wrap up and get to questions. Um, and I'm going to just touch on the one from Lima, Ohio. This is one where uh, an officer, a sergeant actually over there, really, really pushed hard on having an archive, um, even though the city had never seen a records request for social media. And lo and behold, the archive was in place and one came in and it requested all, the records request request all communications regarding their social media policies and removal of comments. Folks, when we see these records requests and we see them quite frequently across our customer base, over 2,000 agencies we work with, the records requests are not simple. They are things like, give me everything you've deleted and removed in the last six months. Show me every instance in the last two years on Facebook in which you communicated regarding X. Give me all of the social media posting across all of your social networks from comments and posts from the agency related to 14 different keywords. Those are the kinds of records requests. So big success story here for Lima, being proactive, having the archive ready, the records request comes in, no problem, respond to it and move on. So in summary, as you heard uh, from, from, from Staff Sergeant Bear, social media is, is truly impactful for agency. It is a must. Um, records requests are happening day in and day out across the country. We see a lot of them. You don't hear about a lot of them in the news because of the agencies that are archiving and following the policy procedures. It's part of the norm today to receive that records request. Let's make it the norm to be able to weather that request and really be able to focus on what matters, which is communicating with your constituents. And I've touched on a number of topics here. So uh, with the time we have, I want to get to questions. But I did want to put out an offer. We at Archive Social are here to be a resource to you first and foremost. If you have questions about that public records requirement as it pertains to social media in your state, you want to hear what are the specific guidelines to understand them. If you want to hear which agencies in your county, um, we work with over 2,000 agencies across the United States and well over 40 states. Um, we likely have a, 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 a great list of, of agencies around you that are already archived. And if you want to talk to them about archiving and, and hear about that experience, and if you want to hear about those real records requests that are happening week in and week out, those legal situations, we have quite a few stories from, from, from our agencies that we work with that we'd be happy to share with you. We're happy to do a call. Um, this first call is not a product pitch. It's really us being a resource to you. And again, we can talk about the issue. And if we can be helpful, we'll go from there. If you're interested at all, we're going to launch a quick poll um, as we get to questions. Uh, feel free to answer this poll. Um, pick whichever issue you're most interested in hearing about. And I'll have someone on my team reach out to you. And again, try to be as much of a resource to you as possible. And with that, I'm going to hand it back to Erica. And let's see if we can knock out a few questions. Yeah, so let's get right in. Um, Christian, we had one come in about how you initially promoted social media activity. So what efforts did you put in place to uh, let residents know that you have social media sites live and available for them to engage with? Well, I think uh, it's, it's kind of ironic, but what we do is we use our social media. Um, but at the same time, we have done a lot of, uh, we've done some press releases in the past that have led people to the understanding that we do have the various social media pages. In fact, when we recently launched our Snapchat um, uh, ability to use Snapchat, we put that out to all of our various social media platforms that we currently use to let people know that we're currently snapping and if they want to uh, get back on us there that they could do that as well. So I think that reaching out in those ways just continue to reach out through the community. We also let all of our officers here know as well as I let everyone in my family know through my social media pages and a lot of people have uh, engaged us that way. Great, fantastic. And one more, and this is a little bit of a long one, so bear with me. We have a lot of that's the way we've always done it sort of people, but I'm not that person. <laughs> media and understand that producer hates very little more than a talking head presser by an agency PIO. There are some agencies who just want to do a presser and move on. I've had some success with more of a media availability type deal instead of a presser so that the stations can get their own interviews and it looks less like a presser. My question is, have you changed how your agency does media conferencing? Uh, does a media conference, not really for breaking new stuff, but for other things like announcing new policies or procedures, et cetera. So within our department, uh, as far as announcing new policies and procedures, we do um, we do training on those in-house and that's all done through uh, various software systems. So what we try to do there is just keep everyone in, uh, involved through uh, just an Outlook email that gets people the information that they will be training. When it comes to the public and reaching out to our media partners, um, I, I think that 
what we've done is we've evolved over the years to just try to stay at the forefront of the best practices, which in in my mind and in the department uh, discussing these things and having weekly meetings, I think of that besides sending out a press release, like you said, press the press releases that go maybe on an email uh, blast to all of your media partners, um, besides that, we'll also engage with our various social media formats, and it just gets the word out to so many more people. So besides the how we've all, always done it um, kind of thing, that has to be something that comes out of, your, out of the lexicon as we move forward in time to where you're always trying to find better ways and newer ways to engage with the public. And it's, a, it's kind of a, a brick wall in some places when you – uh, get no uh, no kind of traction on trying to change the the culture, but it is uh, it's it's one that can be changed. And I think that the, the examples that we've kind of talked about today are ways that you can maybe find uh, different different ideas that the buy-in can be done through that level, whether it's a, a YouTube video or switching to Twitter to engage those press conferences um, in in different ways. I think that you just have to find the one that fits for your for the culture of your department. Well, with that, everyone, we are at the very top of the hour. We've gone two minutes over, so I appreciate everyone hanging out with us today. And Christian, thank you so much for sharing the amazing work you're doing up in Augusta with us. Um, to yes, everyone, thanks very much. Fantastic. To everyone joining us, thank you again. If you have any questions that I can answer that we didn't get to, please don't hesitate to reach out to me by email. Um, I will, of course, be following up with the resources promised at the top of this webinar. And otherwise, we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you.